Good day grade nines and this is lesson 5.2, a continuation of lesson 5 where we will be looking at the CPJ and how to enter this on the general ledger. Okay, so let's have a look at this CPJ of Ikasi Kofu Kamban. As you can see from the table behind me, the entries on the CPJ have already been placed in the necessary columns. How would we put this on the general ledger? Alright, the first account is bank. Bank is a current asset and it is increasing on the debit side. It is a column total, so 30,166 Rand is posted at the end of the month on the credit side because it is an asset that decreases. Money flows out of the business. The 30,166 Rand is all the money that the business paid in August. So we will use the end of the month as the date in the general ledger T account. Okay, grade 9 learners, next let's look at trading stock. Trading stock is a current asset and increases on the debit side. It is a column total, so you will post the total at the end of the month. Trading stock is debited because it is an asset that increases. The first nominal account that we'll be looking at is wages. Wages is an expense and when you bring the balance down, this should be on the debit side. Wages is a column total, so we post the total at the end of the month. Wages are debited because it is an expense that decreases the owner's equity. The next expense that we will be looking at is rent. Rent is also a sundry account, so you post the amount on the day the transaction took place. Because rent is an expense, you should bring down the balance on the debit side. Rent expense must be debited because expenses decrease the owner's equity. The last T account of this activity is stationary. Stationary is a sundry account, so you post the amount on the day the transaction took place. Stationary must be debited because expenses decrease the owner's equity. Alright grade 9 learners, I hope this activity helped you to understand how you post the CPJ into the general ledger. So grade 9s, it's very likely that you wouldn't be able to get everything on that first time. So let's run through the activity once more so you can get every single piece of it. So the same example once more. Lastly, we will be looking at the principle of balancing the general ledger. Finding the difference between the debit and the credit of the general ledger serves as a check to make sure that each transaction a debit was recorded and a credit was recorded and that they are in balance. If the double entry principle is applied, the debit side balance should match or equal to the credit side balance. Let's look at a few examples in detail. When the accounts are only simply on one side, then only one side of the ledger has been added up. This is not balanced. When the account has more than one entry on both sides, then the ledger is balanced. Let's see for example. This is how it should look like. Grade 9, this is the end of lesson 5. We looked at lesson 5.1 and lesson 5.2 and how to post the CRJ and the CPJ on the general ledger. Lastly, we looked at how to balance the general ledger. Next time, we'll be looking at how to use and how to post on the trial balance. Thank you very much. Have a pleasant day.